All right. Welcome back to The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about one of the more interesting nutritional supplements, something called choline, as important as the stuff is. It wasn't really recognized as an uh, essential nutrient, or at least a conditionally essential nutrient, until the late 1990s. Just last week, an article was published in the Journal of Clinical Nutrition that suggested that pregnant moms should be getting more choline to support, to support healthy fetal development, the development of the fetus, as well as to prevent birth defects. Choline is an important substance for all periods of rapid growth. It helps the body turn fats into uh, structural elements, especially structural elements in the nervous system. So you eat fat, and then choline is partially involved, at least, in turning that fat and the fatty substance into nerve cell membranes and, and various, uh, cell, uh, nerve, uh, various membranes, various cell membranes, liver cell membranes, brain cell membranes, etc. It's not just for fetal and infant growth either. Bodybuilders benefit from choline. Athletes benefit from choline. And choline may also play an important role in speeding recovery from surgical procedures. But clearly, the development of the fetus and the infant are primary biological nutritional roles for choline, especially for the health of the brain, the baby's brain, the infant's brain, the fetus's brain and nervous system, and especially for memory functions and intellectual functions, an area in the brain called the hippocampus, which is responsible, thought to be responsible for most intellectual functions and memory functions, is especially dependent on choline. As a mother's breast milk develops, as it turns from colostrum or first milk into more mature milk over time, the choline levels of the milk nearly doubles from the time it's first formed as colostrum until it matures into fully functioning breast milk. And this implies that as the fetus or as the infant is growing, its choline needs become more and more dramatic. I've been reading Dr. Wallach's new book, Epigenetics. We're going to be talking about this a lot in the coming days. This thing is a magnificent, magnificent book. Uh, it's titled Epigenetics, the Death of the Gene Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission. And it's really a kind of a walk through all human thinking about health from the days of shamans and cave people all the way to the days of the genetic theory uh, in the, in the uh, 20th and 21st century. Dr. Wallach makes the case in the book, and he's made the case for a long time, that there's no genetic diseases. And every time Doc makes this claim, and he's made it for years, he's been making it for, gosh, for at least 10 or 15 years, that there's no genetic diseases. And every time he says this, you can hear mainstream medicine's collective groan or collective scream. How can Doc Wallach say there's no genetic diseases? But when you think about it, what Dr. Wallach really means is, and it's hard to argue this point, what he really means is that genetic breakdowns are caused by the cells in the fetus. The cells of the developing infant or the developing baby in the womb are not getting their nutrients. The cells aren't getting their nutrients, and that turns into genetic disorders. Genes need nutrition. Just like any other part of a cell needs nutrition, so do genes. Genes need B vitamins. Genes need minerals. Genes need uh, various uh, uh, antioxidants for protection. Genes need nutrients, as does every other subsystem in a uh, subcellular system in the body. Everything needs nutrition. Genes in a cell respond to nutritional, the nutritional and biochemical environment, just like anything else does. The genes are sitting inside the nucleus, which is sitting inside the cell, and the whole shebang needs nutrition. The cell needs nutrition, the substructures in the cell need, the nu need nutrition, and the genetics need nutrition. Without essential nutrients, genetic dysfunction is inevitable. Without the basic mighty 90 nutrients that the mother must be getting in order for the genes and the, uh, the fetal genes to develop correctly, genetic dysfunction is inevitable. Birth defects are inevitable and so-called genetic diseases become more likely. But the point is, the problem is not the genetics. The problem is not the genes. The problem is the nutrients that then, or the lack of nutrients, that then affect the genes. You guys get this. It's so important. Nobody's saying there's no diseases that a baby can come out of the womb with. That's obvious. There are diseases that babies are born with, but don't blame the genes. The genes are simply responding to what the, to the environment that they're sitting in, what the nutritional status of the cell is. And where does that nutritional status get developed? From the foods we eat and the supplements we take. Genes are negatively affected 
when nutrition is lacking, if the genes are uh, negatively affected enough, you're going to get a birth defect. The baby will have a birth defect or a so-called genetic disease. In terms of choline, well, choline is not strictly essential in the sense that your body can make choline. It's conditionally essential for the health of the maternal and fetal environment for the uh, the genetics uh, for the genetics of the fetus as well as for the appropriate development of the infant. An essential nutrient is a nutrient that the human body cannot make. An essential nutrient is a nutrient, a substance that the body needs but it cannot make. And you see how important this is. It's like air. Air is an essential nutrient, an essential substance. It's not a nutrient. It's an essential substance. You can't make air. you got to breathe air. Essential nutrients are the same way. An essential nutrient is a nutrient that mom can't make and that a fetus can't make and that an infant can't make that nobody can make. Now, choline, as I say, is not essential in the sense that we can make it, but it's conditionally essential in the sense that we don't make enough and a fetus doesn't make enough and a mother doesn't make enough. That means without choline, birth defects, genetic defects are much, much more likely. Developmental effects are much, much more likely, especially as it affects the brain and the nervous system of the growing and developing baby. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue this discussion when we come back from our break. If you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're talking about choline, really interesting nutrient that you don't hear a lot about. Really, the research on choline is has uh, has gotten gotten fast and furious. Lots of articles have appeared on choline in the last 15 years. It was only around 1997 or 1998 that choline was appreciated as an essential or a conditionally essential nutrient, especially for brain health, especially for the health of the nervous system, and also for the health of the liver. Folks who have liver diseases tend to be deficient in choline. Choline uh, can be considered one of the one of the B vitamins, it's water soluble, which means every time we go to the bathroom, every time we urinate, it's excreted out. This idea of excreting out your B vitamins and your vitamin C as well, and your electrolytes, is very important to recognize. There's, we've said so many times in the program, there's two types of nutrients. You've got water soluble nutrients, those are nutrients that dissolve in water. And then you have fat soluble nutrients, nutrients that dissolve in fat. Your fat soluble nutrients are more like long term nutrients because they're stored. Fatty material is sticky and it tends to get stored. Unlike water soluble materials, the B complex, electrolytes like potassium and sodium and magnesium and calcium, and vitamin C all are urinated out. That means the more water you're drinking, the more likely it is that you're going to be deficient in these nutrients. Same thing if you wake up in the morning after you've gone to the bathroom a couple of times, uh, urinated a couple of times in the middle of the night. Most of us tend to be tired. Well, one of the reasons we're tired first thing in the morning is because we're deficient in our energizing, quick-acting nutrients, the B-complex, vitamin C, and electrolytes. The fat-soluble nutrients, your vitamins D, E, A, and K, and essential fatty acids, they're more long-term type nutrients for building things. The, the water-soluble nutrients are for quick energy. And one of the reasons we're fatigued in the morning is because we've lost these quick energy nutrients. That's why it's so important, especially if you're drinking water, a lot of water, or especially if you've gone to the bathroom a few times or more in the middle of the night, that you replace those water-soluble nutrients with your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. If you're drinking 16 ounces of water every few hours or so, make sure that at least one of those 16-ounce bottles has some beyond tangy tangerine in it. That way you'll be replacing the B vitamins, the vitamin C, and the electrolytes that you're urinating out as you go to the bathroom. Choline is a B vitamin-like substance. It's got a watery nature, but it's also got a fatty nature. It's kind of a, has a uh, uh, ambidextrous kind of quality. It's watery as well as fatty. It's watery, which means you're going to be excreting it out as you go to the bathroom. On the other hand, choline is also very important for the fatty part of the body. In fact, choline is one of the most important of all fat processing nutrients. Deficiencies in choline will typically affect the liver, the brain, and the nervous system, all of which are dramatically affected for better or for worse by fat metabolism. Choline's dual nature, it's fatty nature and watery nature, it's got fatty, uh, fatty aspects and watery aspects, makes it ideal for membranes. 
Membranes have both fatty and watery characteristics. Membranes have to have this fatty and watery nature for them to do their separating work. Membranes separate compartments in the body. Membranes are made of fat. They're like little slices of fat that act to separate two watery compartments. That means they have to have both a fatty nature and a watery nature in order to do their separating work more effectively. Thus choline, which in its various forms and its various derivatives can function as both a fatty and watery substance, is always, always, always going to be found stored in membranes. Membranes can be thought of as a magic bridge or a magical transformation area where water from inside a cell gets converted into the fat of the membrane first, which then gets converted back into the watery compartment on the other side of the membrane. A membrane is like a, a transition space between two watery compounds. You've got the watery compound, a cell membrane anyway, you've got a watery compound inside the cell, you've got a membrane, and then you've got the outside watery world that the cell is residing in. The body is made up of these cells. Each cell has an inside, a membrane, and then an outside. Inside, membrane, and then an outside. And this membrane is really, really fascinating. On the TV show Star Trek, when the spaceship or the starship Enterprise goes from regular speed to warp speed, there's this little bumpy transformation as the starship or the spaceship jumps to the higher speed. If you guys watch Star Trek, you know what I'm talking about. There's a little bumpy, bumpy ride that the Enterprise goes through as it jumps speeds. This bumpy ride always occurs as transformations from one state go to another state. This bump that occurs as one speed is changing to the next is a type of membrane. Anytime there's a transformation, there's going to be a period of adjustment, and that period of adjustment can be thought of as a membrane. When it comes to the cells of the body, the watery inside world of a cell is kept separated from the watery outside word world of a cell by the membrane, which must, by definition, be a layer of fat. If it wasn't a layer of fat, it couldn't separate the two watery compartments, the watery inside from the watery outside. And this layer of fat between two phases of water represents a transition from the inside to the outside. The membrane is fatty, which from a chemical standpoint is of a different nature than the inside and outside. It's got inside, then, then membrane, then outside, and this different chemical makeup, this fatty nature of the membrane as opposed to the watery nature of the inside and outside is what accounts for its ability to segregate the inside world of a cell from the outside uh, environment that that cell is sitting in. If there's no difference between the inside and the outside, if there's no membrane in the middle, they're just going to blend into each other and you're not going to have your boundary. It's like, an, uh, like a fence that surrounds a city. If there's no fence that surrounded the city or if the fence wasn't different from the inside of the city and the outside of the city, the two would blend together. A fence or a wall acts to distinguish the inside from the outside because it's a different nature. It has a different, compart a different makeup than the inside and the outside. A membrane from a microscopic perspective, from a nanoscopic perspective, is like a wall. It's like a fence. It's like the little bumpy part in the transformation from regular speed to warp speed. In terms of this membrane, uh, in terms of the membrane, choline acts like a stabilizing force. It's like the bricks of a wall or the bricks of a fence. It forms the solidity or the solid structure of this fatty slice that separates the, the membrane that separates the inside from the outside. Choline is membranous. Think membrane, think choline. Hang tight, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. Welcome back to The Bright Side. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben. We're talking about choline and membranes. There's actually a uh, there's a derivative of choline called cytocholine, which has uh, some really interesting properties for stabilizing cell membranes. This idea of the membrane is so, so important when it comes to health. We've said on The Bright Side that all disease is cell disease, but really all disease is cell membrane disease. And why is this important? Well, it's important because if you got a messed up cell membrane, any nutritional supplements that you take, any hormonal supplements that you take, even any medications that you take, 
aren't going to be operating with full effectiveness. This is especially true when it comes to nutritional supplements as well as to hormones. And as we get older, one of the things that happens to our bodies is our cell membranes start to break down. That means our hormones, if we're taking hormone replacement therapy or even our hormones that our body naturally makes, will not work as effectively. And it also means that nutrients won't work as effectively either. It also means that oxygen, so important for energizing a cell, won't get into a cell as effectively. And it also means that poison and toxins won't leave a cell as effectively. Thus, the unbelievable, unspeakable importance of the cell membrane and the, and the health of the cell membrane. How do you keep your cell membranes healthy? Well, first of all, you want to make sure you got enough fats, good fats, essential fatty acids and such in your diet. Secondly, you want to make sure you have enough nutrients in your diet, especially choline and lecithin, which is the primary source of choline in the American diet. One, Just another aspect, just another important aspect of lecithin. We've talked about lecithin as a supplement for helping us process fats. Well, lecithin, as it turns out, is also a great source of choline. Would it surprise you if I told you that there's an awesome longevity product that doesn't even have choline on the label, but yet it's a great supplement for helping build up your own natural choline. This is a supplement that we've talked about a lot. It's a longevity supplement. And it doesn't say choline on the label, but there's an ingredient in this supplement that can actually be transformed into choline. We will tell you what that is tomorrow on our next Bright Side episode, so you're going to want to tune in for that. Time to hit our phones. 855-660-4261 is our number. We do have a couple lines open for you. 855-660-4261. Let's go to Pennsylvania and welcome Dolly to the Bright Side. What's going on, Dolly? How you doing? Hi, Ben. Kudos to you. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania. Dolly, I recognize Hi, yeah. you. Good, What's going good, on? Good, good, We you miss never... you. I Thank was so you. surprised, but I'm really happy for the public listening to you, especially. I'm thinking you need shared with everyone. I appreciate and I that, need Dolly. To, when I hang up, I need to get the radio station so in Pennsylvania I can be listening. I appreciate that, You already that, have me interested for tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. What's going on I today? I have a problem since you left. Them. Oh, I bet so, I know what your problem is. Yeah, you can't get that cream any, anymore. Right. Nobody can probably make that. Um, when I saw Dr. Bonge, you know, they gave me a new pharmacist, and when I asked her without giving the list that you, my daughter, who is a little brighter than me, had asked you for the ingredient list, and she had received it from you a time ago, and she says, well, I have that, but of course it doesn't say how to mix the amount. So I didn't give it to anyone, but I asked for their formula, and when I saw it, it was nothing like oh. yours, and I thought... I need to talk to Ben. <laughs> I'll take care of you. You know, I'm starting a new company, a new skincare company here. I got some legal things, legal hoops I got to jump through first. But uh, you're on my list to call. Both you and your daughter, Michelle, are on my list oh, to call great, first as soon as great. that gets set up. Is there anything um, I can help you with today? Well, tell me how long because I'm down to hardly any left in the job. Um, you know what? Why don't you do this, Dolly? Send me an email, Ben at KSCO.com, and I'm going to send you some complimentary products. I'll, if I have any well, of that ben other stuff left, at, Ben. Ben. What? K for King, S for Sam, C for Cat, O for Oscar, KSCO.com. Put your phone number on there, too. I'd like to have I don't think I have it, actually. And I, I think I owe Michelle a call, by the way. I don't think I called her back. But in any case, send your, put your phone number, put your address, and then I'll give you a call uh, maybe later today or tomorrow, and we'll figure something out. I'll get you some okay, stuff. Okay, make sure I have that right. Ben, K-S. No, no, Ben at. Ben. Ben at. K. S. C. O. Dot com. Okay, Ben okay. at KSCO.com. We'll Correct. do. Okay. Thanks so much, Dolly. So Keep much, listening to the program because I'll be making announcements about my new skincare stuff here in okay. the coming days and weeks. Okay. Well, what, do, what radio station do I tune in from Pennsylvania to You know, I you? don't know. I'll look into it, and when you send me an email, I'll respond back to you. Great, great. Thanks, Dolly. Hey guys, good to hear from you. Ben. You're so good, Ben. Thanks. Thank you. God bless. That's awesome. I know, I know Dolly from my, from my other career. As a skincare farm assistant, for those of you who have inquired about my skincare products, hopefully I'll be, uh, as soon as I get through my, my legal stuff, uh, hopefully we'll have some other, some products coming out and we'll, we'll be telling, telling you more about that in the coming days and weeks. Okay, 855-660-4261. Let's, uh, head to Michigan and welcome James to the bright side. What's up, James? How you doing, buddy? Hello, Ben. Hey, James. Um, my mother is 83 years old. Oh, wow. Awesome. Very active. Nice. And as far as I'm concerned, she's in good health. Okay. She just reported to me that her she went to the doctor for a checkup. Okay. The doctor says that her kidneys are only performing at 15%. Mm. 
Really? And she didn't know that? No, she didn't, did not that's, know that. That's interesting, because that's kidney failure. 15% is, yeah. uh, is considered kidney failure. There's different stages yeah. of kidney disease, uh, and they base it on how well your kidney filters stuff out. If it's at 15%, you're looking at kidney failure, and that's pretty severe. They didn't say anything about dialysis or anything? Not yet. Hmm. I was just curious as there uh, you sure she didn't say 50 you sure she didn't say 50 percent five zero because that's more typical less than 15 or less is pretty serious and I I, I, think, I yeah I think I, I'm quite sure she said 15 percent well I get was, a, I would get a second opinion I would be getting a second opinion she's certainly wise to be worried about it. that's pretty severe stuff that's that's uh that's that's kidney failure as I say so a couple things. Uh, when you got when your kidneys are messed up, you just need more of the same things that everybody needs, and that's potassium and calcium and phosphorus and protein. Got to watch out a little bit more carefully with your sodium, uh, but you just need the basics, but just more of them, and it's more imperative. Now, if she's 83 years old and she's doing well, she's probably she's probably taking care of something because at the age of 83, most of us are falling apart pretty good. So if she's out there uh, exercising and walking around, and she looks she appears to be fine and feels healthy at the age of 83, I would say she's probably doing a good job and. I don't really, I don't understand how she could have, she could be in kidney failure and not know it. In any case, get her on the Ultimate Daily. Make sure that she's using the entire Healthy Start Pack, and that's the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Ultimate EFAs, and the Osteo FX. Um, you want to get her, make sure she's got a good source of protein. Whey protein is going to be the best. Uh, uh, but if she has a problem with whey, she's going to have to go over to hemp seed protein, which is the second best source of protein. She may also want to try egg protein, which is also a good source of protein, as long as she can eat eggs. And uh, yeah. let me think a couple other things for you here real quick, and then I'll let you continue. If she can do legumes, those are also good sources of protein. Uh, and then the electrolytes. Vegetable juice is also a great source of electrolytes. Uh, have her get a Vitamix and make her own vegetable juices. She can also, if she doesn't want to go out and get a Vitamix, she can use a regular juicer, but she's going to miss the fiber. Uh, uh, Vitamix allows you to keep the fiber. And have her doing vegetable waters. Vegetable waters are a little different from vegetable juices in the sense that a vegetable water just has a couple pieces of cucumber uh, dissolved or, or mixed in with some water as opposed to a juice, which is just the pure vegetable. So if using vegetable waters, vegetable juices, those are also great sources of electrolytes. In addition to the Healthy Star Pack and the Ultimate Daily, hang tight. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, James in Michigan, continuing on with kidney issues. Uh, James says his mom was diagnosed with kidney failure. They didn't, did they call it kidney failure? They just said she had less than a 15% filtration rate. Well, she didn't exactly call it kidney failure, but of course I, I, I naturally knew it was a kidney that's, failure. That's pretty much officially kidney failure at 15% filtration. In any case, uh, Ultimate Daily, uh, Healthy Start Pack, make sure she's getting enough protein. You want to be a little bit careful of phosphorus. Uh, a lot of foods contain phosphorus, especially dairy can be a source of high phosphorus. And there's also phosphorus uh, food additives. Phosphorus is one of the most important food additives or one of the most prevalent food additives. And look for phosphates or phosph uh, phosphorus or phosphates. Or they come in various terms uh, on your ingredient deck. Uh, when you're using processed food, probably just best to stay away from processed food, actually. But if you are going to use processed food, look on the ingredient deck for the word phosphorus or phosphates, and those are kind of, those are foods that you're going to want to stay from, stay away from. If you have a kidney problem, you may not be eliminating phosphorus as effectively, and that can cause problems. So uh, stay away from uh, uh, processed foods. Dairy, uh, nuts, and beans can also be sources of phosphorus as well as uh, perhaps beer, if she's a beer drinker, which I doubt, that can be also a source of phosphorus. So anyway, that's just for, just FYI. Anything else, James? Um, oh, I was thinking about eggs. She does eat eggs. Eggs uh, are great. If she can handle eggs, make sure she can handle them, though. A lot of times we think we can handle them, but we end up with uh, digestive health issues. But it doesn't sound like she's got any any health problems, so eggs probably a good source of protein for her. Protein is very important for everybody, especially if she's especially for elderly folks, uh, frail folks, post-surgery, pre-surgery. These are all uh, these are all groups of folks who need more protein, and you don't want to you don't want to skimp on her protein as long as she has no problems processing it. Got to move on, James. Any, uh, unless unless you have something real quick for us, somebody. What's that? 
Yeah. Uh, Yarrow tea's good. Yarrow tea's good. All all herbal teas are good, and they're great sources of electrolytes as long as she can handle it. It could be a good uh, it could be a good beverage for. Her. Thanks so much for your call, buddy. Appreciate it. Moving on to Ron in Texas. Welcome to the bright side, my friend. What's going on? Is this me? Did, this is did you. you. Get me. You're you, and I'm me, as far as I know. <laughs> anyway, Ron. Hey, hey, hey Ben. I, I'm, I'm 80 years old now, and I've I've been speaking to you for about roughly a year. I'm in really great shape, and awesome. uh, I uh, take supplements, and, and I do the right things. The trouble I've had since age, since approximately age 77, is a drop in my libido. Okay. I just don't get erections anymore, and uh, uh, I can't ejaculate. I mean, just it, okay. Well, well, these are part and, par- part and parcel with the aging process. Your blood pressure is okay and, and blood fats and cholesterol and all that stuff. You yep. had that checked, I yep. take it? Okay. That's you. And no diabetes or any, any weight no gain? No diabetes. Okay. Let me give you a couple libido nutrients. One of the most important is zinc. Zinc is zinc. important. For- zinc. Absolute must-have. In fact, zinc's a must-have for everybody. How it's much? The- it's the major building nutrient. It's involved in all anabolic or building pro- uh, building processes in the body. Has a major role to play in sexual chi or sexual energy. Very important yeah. for testosterone, testosterone metabolism. Super important for the skin, for skin healing, anti wrinkles, for acne, for psoriasis and eczema. And it can uh, help get you. I think I can say Woody on the air. Can I say that? Help get you one of those. You know what I'm talking about, Ron? I know. Z- I know. Zinc, 50 milligrams a day. Look for zinc picolin. That's right. The best. Is picolinate, and that's P is in Paul, I C O L I N A T. Okay, good. And then always balance your zinc out with copper. If you start to take in zinc, you may end up deficient in copper, and vice versa. For those of us who are taking copper or getting copper through through the through our water from copper pipes, we may run deficient in zinc. So, uh, zinc and copper go together. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate, two to four milligrams of copper. If you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, you'll get some copper there. Dr. Wallach loves copper, and and as, as well as he should because it's an awesome mineral. Uh, copper. Copper is important for hair. It's important for blood vessels. Uh, copper is one of the major detoxing minerals. And you'll get one milligram or so per two scoops in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. But it's a good idea to get two to four milligrams of copper. Look for right. chelated copper to balance your zinc. The sec- yeah, chelated copper. And I- I'm sorry to be going fast, but I want to see if I can finish up my calls here today. Uh, the second important uh, libido nutrient is vitamin E. 400 international units of vitamin E, as I've, I've said before in the program. Tocopherol, which is the name for vitamin E, the, the uh, Latin name for vitamin E, means to bear children, and that's because vitamin E is involved in uh, in uh, fertility, uh, although it does also has some uh, pro-libido properties. You might want to think about progesterone cream, which can be very helpful for the libido, especially for older folks. Progesterone levels drop really fast as we get older. Uh, applying some progesterone cream to your uh, inner part of your arm or the inner part of your thigh four or five days a week may help you with your libido, may have a relaxing effect. One of the most important pro-libido strategies is to relax. When we're under stress, whether it's emotional stress or mental stress or physiologic stress, our body doesn't really think sex is that important. As you know, makes sense, right? It's worried about surviving. The last thing it's going to concern itself is about sex. So using relaxation strategies, hot tubs, massages, deep breathing, all of these can have pro-libido functions, uh, pro-libido benefits. And and then uh, uh, relaxation nutrients like progesterone, which isn't really a nutrient, but it's a uh, hormone-like substance that can help. A DHEA also may help you. And then magnesium is probably the most important of the re- relaxing minerals. Um, relaxing nutrients that you can use, maybe a thousand to two thousand milligrams of magnesium a day, and then uh, protein probably is also a good idea. The amino acid arginine can be very helpful. That's uh, going to be found in nuts as well as in high protein foods. Maybe five grams, anywhere from one to five grams of arginine powder a day, as well as whey protein, which will get you some arginine too. Uh, uh, soy protein actually is also a good source of arginine. So those are some good ideas for you. Thanks. Um, anything else? Can I can I expect a return to somewhat? I can't tell you because I don't I don't know your health condition, but you can I can definitely tell you, you can expect to have a greater libido. I can't tell you if you're going to have a return because I don't know where you're at at this point or where you were before you started. It was to, pretty high. It, it was, was pretty, pretty high. high. Well, yeah. I would suspect that you should notice some pretty good results within a week or two. I can't tell you if you're going to get completely back to where you were, but you should be you should be satisfied. At the very least, you're going to have more get up and go and more chi if you do all the things we just told you about. Thanks so much, Ron. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a beautiful day, buddy. All right. Walter in Florida got about a minute and a half. What's going on, my friend? How can we help you? 
Walter? Do we have Walter? Uh, I yes, think we have... Hey, Walter. Yes. What's, what's going on, bro? Wife had, wife had surgery in January, the second surgery. Your wife did? Yes. Okay. Against my best opinion, but she went through it anyway. She trusted her doctor. Okay. Not not always the best move, but go ahead. No, I want to ask you if you can do a talk show on hysterectomy surgery and have somebody called Nora call for you on your show. I, I'm sorry. You know, Walter, you're cutting out a little bit. What kind of surgery did you say? Hysterectomy. Hysterectomy surgery. You want me to have a show about history? I would love to do that. This is a very important subject. You don't, I'll tell you right now, unless you got cancer, you don't want a hysterectomy. You don't want to have any organs removed. This is so important, you guys. Every darn organ in the body, every system in the body is there for a reason. That includes your gallbladder. That includes your female reproductive system. That includes your breasts. That includes every structure in the body, the appendix. Whatever system, uh, part of the body the doctor tells you you don't need, you need. They're not there. They wouldn't be there if you didn't need them. Now, if you have cancer, that's different. But fibroids and cysts are not re endometriosis. These are not reasons to have your female reproductive system butchered out of your body. Now, if they've been taken out, there are things that you can do. So, so don't, don't, don't be, uh, you know, don't freak out too much. There's things that you could do, but it just means that you have to take extra care with your body. If you have a hysterectomy, it becomes extra important that you focus on fats and fat metabolism. And this is the most important uh, important effect of hysterectomy surgery, of having your uterus removed and having your womb removed, having your ovaries removed. You're going to start to uh, have your fat processing compromised. And we spent a lot of time at the beginning of the program talking about how important fat processing is, especially as it regards choline. So, Walter, got to got to wind down here, but have your wife focus on fat metabolism first and foremost. That is, use digestive enzymes, use lecithin, use apple cider vinegar after meals. I would be throwing in some pancreatin as well. Get on the Biolumin Nightly Essence and make sure she's getting her essential fatty acids, her healthy start pack nutrients. I'd be getting on the healthy start pack right away. And then also vitamin A, key player in building the body, the fatty vitamin, vitamin A, as well as vitamin E and vitamin K and maybe even vitamin D as well, although the sun is always going to be your best source of vitamin D. Thanks for your call, Walter. Appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your letters. Thanks for your Facebooks. Appreciate all of you guys. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about choline. I'll tell you about a longevity product that doesn't have choline on the label, but has an ingredient that your body can turn into choline. We'll tell you about that tomorrow on The Bright Side. If you're interested in joining The Bright Side Ben team, you can call the phone team at 866-735.